Yes, when we were still inside Al Asan Mosque here in Casablanca. Whoever comes first, stay in the front. We start, yeah, we start fitting from the front. So in prayer, there is no one better than the others, except when the king comes to pray. The king, of course, he has a special, so right. he's usually at the front, right after the imam. And then people pray behind him. him. But uh, the rest of the people, whoever comes first, takes the, takes the first place. And we start filling the lines one after the other and going up. This mosque is very large, it's very big. So usually it's barely, it barely fills two lines because it's a very big uh, mosque. Other smaller mosques, they get full to the half. And, uh, uh, that's where the Imam stands and this way this is facing Mecca. Mm -hmm. Mecca when we pray as Muslims we always have to face Mecca, Mecca in Saudi Arabia. For us Mecca is located in the east so we are facing east. This is called Al Qibla which is direction to Mecca. People from other countries like Europe they have to face different direction because they also have to face Mecca. So for us since Mecca is in the east we are facing east that way uh, for, for prayers. And, um, and uh, you can see some chairs. These chairs are for old people. Some because old people, they cannot go all the way down. So uh -huh. they sit there and make it easier. Yeah, they can get we, back up. We yeah, can go yeah. down, we just can't get back up. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So when, when we pray, we fill one line after the other, and we do like this. Let me show you here. Okay, can you come next to me? So when we, pray, when we pray, we stand like this, and we we close the gap between in in our toes Touch foot. like this. Yeah, and we do it like this, and we also close the gap with the elbows. And then we close our eyes and we hear the imam as he's reciting the Quran, and uh, we follow after him. Then when he goes down, we go down after him like this, and then we go up. And, and we go all the way down like this. So when we go all the way down like this, that's, we, that's the time when we start uh, um, having, uh, like, uh, if we have wishes from God, we start asking God for these wishes. To, to help me with prayers. my family, help yeah. me with yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. my business, whatever. Yeah. Because the moment that we go down, you put your, your uh, forehead on the floor, you close your eyes, this is the closest you get to God. So uh, that's the time when you have wishes, you tell them. And also, when, when we go down, we like to stay um, like long, five seconds or ten seconds. The longer you stay, the more relaxed you feel. Because as you go down like this, mm -hmm. the blood flows down to your brain. And as you go up, the blood moves, so it makes you feel relaxed and better. You can try this uh, as well. As you go down, you stay like this for, for a while, and then you go up. It makes you feel better. It, it like it releases the pressure of the blood in your head. You can try that. This is how we do the prayers. And every salat, it has different uh, different uh, uh, times of going up and down, which is called rakah. And we, as we pray, you know how many times we pray a day? Five. 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 Five times. Correct. So the first one is right after the the break of down. This is the first one at 5 a.m. in the morning. The second one is at early afternoon, which is around 1 p.m. The third one is at late afternoon. The fourth one is right at the sunset. And the last one is usually two hours uh, after, after the, uh, the sunset. And it's, uh, it's decided by the, we don't measure it by the time. It's measured by, by the, the sun. sun. Yeah, by the location of the sun. And when we pray, uh, uh, there is no specific uh, group of age who have to pray. We start getting used to it from the age of six. This is the time when we start to educate and teach our kids to learn to pray. Kids in year ten, what you six? Are? Yeah, yeah, from six years old, and from ten years, this is like the time when it starts getting mandatory for them to to pray, because uh, this is one of the five pillars of Islam. Do you know what are the five pillars of Islam? You know, it's one to do the hajj. This is one of them. Yes. That's one of them. Yeah. And what's the others? <laughs> Anyone know? What are the others? The five pillars. You can guess it, I'm sure. What What do Muslims do? Don't eat pork. Uh, 
No, not that. <laughs> <laughs> this is correct, yes, but this is not the one, one of the pillars. So the pilgrimage is what you said, this is one. That's one of them. What, what, what else? I know that's very important. We do important. all the things that only Muslims do. What, what, what are we doing now? In pray five times a day. Praying, correct, this is one. Praying, so we pray five times a day. Something else? During this month, uh, what when you are we do Ramadan, Ramadan, you do your fasting. You. Yes, so this is uh, uh, number three. Um, okay, now there are two left. These are hard to guess. So the, the uh, uh, no, this is not a, 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 a one of the uh, pillars. So the five pillars of Islam. The no other God besides one. Allah. Sorry. No other God besides Allah. Yes, exactly. What what is this called? It's mm. called Shahada. This is the first one. A shahada is when we acknowledge and uh, claim that the loneliness of God and that Muhammad is a prophet. We call it shahada. In Arabic, we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, which translates to, we witness that there is only one God and Muhammad is a prophet. This is the first one. And this is all it takes you to convert to Islam. You just have to repeat this phrase three times and then congratulations, you are already Muslim. It's as simple as that. So this is the first one. The, the second one is praying five times a day. Uh, number three is fasting during Ramadan, which we, which a holy month we do every year for one month. And uh, number four is called Zakat. Zakat is a sort of an annual charity that we like to give away. <coughs> Excuse me. That we like to give away to uh, uh, to to people who need it at the end of Ramadan. Uh, so all of these four, they are must for everyone. And the fifth one, which is the pilgrimage. And the pilgrimage. This is the only one that is you have to, if you're capable, financially and physically. If you are capable to to do it financially and physically, <clears throat> then you must do it. If not, then it's okay. Uh, it's not a must. It's not. Yeah, okay. which is going to make it. Why financially? Because it costs you a lot of money. The flight ticket, the accommodation, because you'll be there for many days. And why physically? You need to be in a good health. Because one of the rituals there, we have to climb two mountains called Safa and Marwa. You have to climb one peak to the other, up. Oh. up and down, up and down seven times. And there is a story behind this. Oh. So this, uh, these are, uh, in order to do that, you know, you need to yeah, have a good healthy. physical uh, yeah. condition. So, since not everybody can uh, can have uh, the match the both the financial and the physical condition, this is the only one that he says woman ilayhi sabila, which means whoever could do it, they have to do it. So, if you can do it, it's okay. But the four above, yes. Oh, where do you fly? Sorry. Where do you fly out to? To Saudi Arabia. This is where the Mecca is. It's the holy place Mecca for Muslims. Mecca is that the um, black box? Right? Yes, correct. Yes. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's Kaaba. in black. Uh, it's square in shape. Yeah. It's in black. It's covered with a black. Uh, so why fabric. do they go around that? Because this is, we believe, the center of Earth. So when we pray, that is the center when we face. Ah, it. okay. This is a, one of our prophets. He was the person who built it. So when we go, we go around it because this is the center. People from here, they have to face it. People from the other side, they have to face it. So oh. when we are there, all we do, we pray, we face it. And then after we finish prayer, we start walking around and uh, reciting the Quran and giving prayers to God because that is like a house of God. God doesn't live there, God is in the sky. But this is like a holy place for God, where we go there and we feel close <coughs> to, uh, to Him. Because the Prophet uh, uh, used to be there. Was and, there? Uh, yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Question for you. Yes? During the month of, what um, call it again? Ramadan? 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 Ramadan, yes. What is it that you guys have to sustain from besides fasting? So, Ramadan, what is your idea? What do you think? Well, I heard. To be closer to God? Yes, correct. And, uh, but what, what do we do in Ramadan? I don't, I'm asking, I don't know. I just hear. Per, you fast. Per. You have to fast for morning. At a certain time in the morning, you got to stop eating, and then you can eat to the evening. So, but fasting, I guess cleansing or so something? So, fasting, it's not a food strike. Mm -hmm. so fasting, it's not about food only. So, as we say, when we say fasting, we don't mean the food and the water only. Mm -hmm. uh, so in fasting, mm -hmm. uh, during Ramadan, we refrain from eating and drinking from the break of dawn to sunset. 
So about 16 hours a day, depending on the season. And uh, uh, fasting is not only food strike, it's more of a spiritual uh, healing. So during Ramadan, we, uh, uh, we train ourselves to be better humans. So this is the time to quit the bad habits. If you're smoking, for example, this is the time where you can't do you it. Stop. If okay. you drink, if you this, you cannot do it during uh, the time of fasting. If you use slur, like dirty words, you should not use it uh, when you're fasting. So when you're fasting, you give up on all the bad habits and the, desi and the, di the, di the desires that we do. Also, if you're married, you have uh, you have uh, uh, your couple. You cannot sleep together until after the the, the sunset. So it's more of a, a spiritual one that we focus on uh, becoming better people. Better. So it uh, teaches you commitment. Yeah. It teaches you discipline, and uh, makes you closer to to God. And um, after the sunset, you can do uh, whatever you want, but. Uh, you know, uh, after the sunset, you can you can sleep with your wife and uh, you can smoke. But you know, in Ramadan, this is the time when we prepare ourselves to to stop all of that. So that's similar to our Lent, because yeah. Yeah. Christians they do, do it Lent. They supposed to give up something yes. for forty days. But Lent exactly. is only like every every when we have 29 days in the month of February that's when we do our Lent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our Lent yeah. changes anytime yeah. depending mm -hmm. on the calendar. Yeah, for us we do it uh, also here also as yeah, do it changes uh, Ramadan changes depending on the calendar. It's okay. decided by the moon. Every year it comes 11 days earlier. So oh. this year it was uh, we started fasting in uh, March 10th or March 11th. I don't mm -hmm. remember the exact day. So mm -hmm. next year it will be either March 1st or April uh, or sorry February 28th. Every year it comes 11 days earlier. It's decided by the moon cycle. By the moon. So the cycle like six moon. years ago it used to be in the middle of summer, but now it's in spring because it coming. comes closer and closer. Oh, right. Yeah. In summer it was harder. Because in summer it's hot, so the days are longer, the sunset is uh, longer. But now as it's getting closer to winter, it's easier. So uh, this is the point of fasting, it's to, to, to teach ourselves to be a better human being. It's not only a food strike. Food is just part of it. Also when you are fasting, you feel for the poor people who don't have food, who don't have... Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you don't have pity on people when you have a full stomach because you never know how they feel. But when you're fasting, you feel how people feel and then you become more giver, more... Right. Uh, you have more, more empathy. Yeah, exactly, because uh, you feel what they feel. Mm. So it, uh, Ramadan it has so many teachings, besides the, uh, the physical health as well. Uh, you know, now we have every year, uh, every now and then we hear a new disease. All these new diseases come from food processed food, canned, mm -hmm. it's unhealthy, didn't exist before. People didn't have a lot of sicknesses that we have now. Yeah, yes. I have a lot of that over here sicknesses from processed food. In, in Morocco, uh, uh, fortunately, we have a lot of healthy food. We have fresh food, but you know, we still use the canned food, of course. We can't, you know, live without it now. It's, everything is commercial. So, but this canned food, you know, f food is uh, unhealthy. So uh, this, in Ramadan, when you fast in, you give your stomach a rest. You uh, uh, you give your body a rest. And if you want to do like a diet, this is the time to do it. Yeah. Also, you prepare yourself to do it because during the holy month of Ramadan, your stomach, you know, the size shrinks a little bit because mm -hmm. it doesn't take as much food as you normally take. And also in Ramadan, when you are fasting during the day, if you are working, you focus on whatever you do. In normal days, you have a lot of distractions. You need to have breakfast, you need to stop for coffee, you need lunch, a lot of distractions. Ramadan, one of the things that I really love Ramadan for, because in Ramadan, you can just focus on what you have to do, and that's it, all the way until the sunset. You don't have any distractions. Yeah, there are a lot of teachings for Ramadan. It's, yeah. it's not only a food strike as people see it. This is only what is on the on the surface, yeah, well, but it's beyond that. that. So that's yeah. why I wanted I want to know the fullness period from you, because I yeah. hear in the you know in the streets, but I just wanted to learn yeah. from you. So would you say that's like, for us, we would call like a holy convocation? Mm -hmm. Like at, at, for my church, every first of the year, a whole church go on a complete corporate fast. Mm -hmm. and we fast from everything. Yeah, yeah. So that's also, just like what y'all do. Yes, also yeah. here. Okay. So we, we fast the whole month, men, 
But women don't fast the whole month. No. They never complete the whole month. Do you know why? No. Menstruation. I have a guess. <laughs> yeah, please tell me. What is it? Well, because they're menstruating. So women, they are special biologically uh, different than men. So the women, they have uh, the, some days that they have their period. Right. During this time, they cannot fast. They cannot fast and they cannot uh, pray. Some, some women for four days, some women six days. So during this time, you cannot fast. You can just eat normally, have normal habits. But once Ramadan is over, then you can make up for those days after Ramadan. And you can make them up all the year round until the next Ramadan comes. Not oh. necessarily uh, 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 like six days or five days in a row. Yeah. You can like fast one day every week or one day every month. You have the whole year until next year to, to make to, it up. To make up those yeah, days. Yeah. So all oh. the women, they have the same. There's women, they cannot fast the whole uh, month. Now, what about a pregnant woman? What, what, what's that story? The, the pregnant uh, is also the same. If she's in a, like, a, uh, now our religion gives us a lot of permissions. Like if you are sick or something, you should not uh, fast. If you have medicines that uh, you need to eat during the day, also you can uh, you should not fast. You should break the fast, but to, to, uh, com to compensate for it, mm -hmm. we give away like every day, we give like a, a small amount of money for charity to give to someone else. Mm -hmm. So this is like to make up for, uh, for the day that you are not fasting. Oh. You give it away to someone. Like we measure it usually with the amount of money that uh, will feed someone for, for, for iftar. So if like iftar is going to cost me like uh, five bucks, I should give uh, every day like five bucks to someone as a charity because this is what it requires to feed someone for iftar. This is how we, we do it. But mm -hmm. people who do this, uh, often they are old people when they have, you know, uh, medicines or if you are sick or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Okay, let's keep walking please.